ان الحمد لله ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا انه اصدق الكلام كلام الله وخير الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها فكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار فقال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القران الكريم بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا وقال الله سبحانه وتعالى ايضا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد الصلاه والسلام على اشرف الانبياء والمرسلين حبيبنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين ومن اهتدى باحسان الى يوم الدين فقال فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في حديثه لا تغضب او كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين سبح اسم ربك الاعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي اخرج المرعى صدق الله وصدق الرسول اما بعد my dear brothers and sisters all praises are due to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we begin by praising him because he is deserving of all praises we praise and we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we thank him in recognition of all of his bounties upon us that which we are aware of and that which we aren't aware of not forgetting the reminder to always send our salam and salutations upon our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon his family upon his companions and upon all those who follow them in righteousness until the end of time my dear brothers and sisters today is indeed a blessed day and on the note of sending salam and salutations upon nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of jumu'ah it is especially it is especially recommended for us to send a lot of salam and darood upon nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so let us not forget to do that as the day continues inshallah my reminder with us today is based on a hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in which a sahaba came to him and he said ya rasulullah awsini ya rasulullah advise me ya rasulullah and the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said two very simple words la taghdab do not become angry do not become angry now this hadith many a times you would have heard this hadith do not become angry right so this sahabi was repeating his request because he desired more advice from rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam keeps saying the same same thing to him la taghdab la taghdab la taghdab do not become angry do not become angry now many of us as we look around many of us would like to follow this do not become angry but we may ask ourselves this question my brother how can i follow this i'm not a human being people will do things to me that make me happy 
It's a natural reaction. It's a natural instinct. Similarly, people are going to do things or say things that will get me angry. It's not something that we can control. So how do I follow this? How do I follow this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? La tahdar. First and foremost, let us examine what is being said here and what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is speaking about here. The question arises whether we have understood the advice of La tahdar. Do not become angry. Because this is a literal translation that we will read in many of the books of hadith. Do not become angry. But what this is saying, we must first understand and recognize that anger is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anger is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How is it a blessing? Let, us, let me ask you a question. If someone were to come into your home and start taking from your property, what is it, what is that emotion that is going to motivate you, that will drive you to defend your property? Anger. Isn't that so? If someone were to interfere with your daughter on the road, what would be the motivating factor to protect your daughter? Anger. If someone were to do an injustice to you, what will make you stand up to represent your right as a Muslim and as a human being? Anger. Isn't that so? So anger, as we see here, is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how is it, if this is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us, لا تغضب. The meaning of this is saying to us, do not exceed the limits of anger. Keep within the limits and do not follow the unlawful demands of anger. Let's look back at the point, at the example I used earlier. If someone were to come into your home and start stealing from your property, yes, anger will make you defend your property. But what is going to stop you from going past that line of defending your property? Of maybe taking this person and do them additional harm that is unnecessary. All right? What is it that's going to stop us from following our anger to transgress this level if somebody were to attack Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a verbal manner? As we see a couple of months ago, about a year or two ago, in France, when a teacher in school, you know, he brought up pictures that depicted an insulting manner of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and someone got so angry, a relative of a student, he went in the middle of the street and chopped the teacher's head off. Is that following within the limits of our anger? No. So this is the advice of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anger is a natural thing. However, it can be used to good and it can be used for good. However, we must be circumspect and do not transgress the limits of our anger and go beyond it in order for it to get control of us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has actually created us with two very distinct qualities. As human beings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have created us with the quwwat al-shahawiyya and quwwat al-ghadbiyya the strength of our desires and the strength of our, of our anger normally people would think of our shahwa of our desires as an evil thing similarly we would take anger as an evil thing because in truth in certain circumstances our desires can be evil and following them can be evil Similarly, our anger can lead us to dangerous and evil places. So although we have these desires, these emotions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with, we can see the good in them. Let us take our shahawat, our desires for example. When we desire something, it helps us to acquire all those things that we need to maintain ourselves. Isn't that so? In today's world, what is the motivating factor for us to, let's say, get married? What is the motivating factor for us to have children? More so, what is the motivating factor beyond that? To let me, to, for me to have a home, for me to have a good job. Are these necessities of life? Right? 
When in our hearts these desires are removed, we find people in many cases of their lives, they're unmotivated, they're stagnant. They achieve little or nothing, absolutely nothing. Isn't that so? So in this case, the desire for something motivates us to do the things that are necessary for it. Let us take the desire for Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is of a different level. Isn't desire our, from our shahwa? Isn't this a desire we have within us? And therefore, because we desire the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're going to seek all of the avenues available to us and that we are commanded to do in order to achieve and fulfill this desire. However, when this desire is in our hearts and we don't keep it under control, let us take in the case you are attracted to someone of the opposite gender. You want to be with this person. The fulfillment of this desire, there's the halal and this is the haram. The halal is to get married, the haram is to commit zina. So each and every one of us, my dear brothers and sisters, we can see from just these brief examples of shahwa and ghadab, of anger and desire, that these are two natural gifts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us. And the onus is upon us as Muslims, as people with a consciousness in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we said in the opening ayat of this, uh, of this khutbah, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqu allaha haqqa tuqati. O you who believe, have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a manner that is deserving or that is required of you to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To have awareness and consciousness and fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if we don't have this in our hearts, if we are not constantly cognizant and aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then so too will the fear of Allah go away. And as such, the reality is we will be people with al taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now both of these components, both of these gifts, are part of our soul. A part of our nafs, rather. Let me use the word nafs. Right? And the nafs, both of these matters need to remain in moderation for the preservation of this nafs. Because in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He described, He described three different types of nafs. Three different types of the self, of the individual, of the soul, whatever we, we want to translate it as. And the point that I would like to emphasize more upon us is the moderation between our anger and our desires. Because when both of them are held in moderation upon goodness, then we are in a state of nafsul mutma'inna. Now what is nafsul mutma'inna? This is the best type of nafs and it is refined and finds pleasure in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As such, all of our actions will end up being in a state of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, when these two strengths exceed their limits by desiring what is not supposed to be desired and becoming angry when it is not supposed to become angry, then the nafs no longer remain mutma'inna. It doesn't no longer became, remain settled. It moves in what is known as nafs al lawama. This is the blameful self. This is the self where most people find themselves, most Muslims, we find pleasures sometimes in committing sins. And we would commit these sins. And thereafter, we're going to feel regret about it. We're going to blame ourselves. We're going to feel remorse of, of committing this sin. But sometimes we're going to still commit this sin again. This is because we are not, still not in control of our desires and ourselves. So we become that blameful self. Where we're gonna follow the desire, follow and commit the sin based on the desire, or exceed the limits of our anger and do something haram. And afterwards, you're gonna come back. Subhanallah, what did I just do? I regret doing that. And then you're gonna put that blame upon yourself in order to rectify yourself. However, when we move past this, when we do, when we are not in control, absolutely lose all control of our desires and of our anger, of our emotions, as is a reality with most people today. 
as is the reality of most people, especially people of kufr, they transcend, they, they transgress these limits. And they're in a state, what is known as nafs al ammar bisu, in which this individual, and even Muslims, is in a state in which constantly they find themselves being urged towards doing evil. And that is all that is a constant for them. They feel the joy and happiness only, no remorse to go commit zina, or to, or to, commit, or to drink alcohol, or to involve in riba, or to be unjust in their business dealings, or to insult somebody uh, without, without rhyme or reason, without limits, to involve in backbiting and slandering, to spread lies, and all of these things that are evil, that are destructive to both us and the people around us. And we feel no remorse for it. We're going to do it day after day, day after day. And this is the reality when we hear the term shahwa and ghadab. And anger and desire, this is what many of us think about. They are so evil that all that comes from them is evil. But this is the reality is, my dear brothers and sisters, this is the, this is the, le the least state when you hit rock bottom and your control of them, this is what happens. So the instruction given by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he said, la taghdab, he's speaking about do not let uh, the strength of our anger exceed its limits. We should keep it in moderation so our nafs remain nafsul mutma'inna. Because that's the state all of us want to be. Alright? So that our anger and our desires, our emotions do not get the better of us. Rather, we are the ones in control over it. So how do we control anger? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, a person who knocks out another is not in reality powerful. The truly powerful one is the one who has control over himself and his anger. The truly powerful one is the one who has control over himself and his anger. So as such, in order to achieve this control, as we need control in anything else, we need to involve we need to involve in constant mujahada, in constant struggle and training of ourselves. Over and over, you're going to try today. You're going to try tomorrow. We're going to fail sometime, but we got to keep trying. As with anything in life, if you really want to achieve it, you have to struggle for it. And this is the mujahada we are talking about. That struggle of the control over our anger. This control of our anger is a great mujahada. And through this mujahada, a person acquires true nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, how do we control our anger? The anger is controlled by a person whose heart, whose heart is one of dhakir. The one whose heart is constantly in remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we mentioned earlier about taqwa, consciousness of Allah. Right? A heart, a heart that is dhakiran, a heart that is remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a heart that is conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there are a few things that we can do in order to control our anger number one excessively making a lot of dhikr subhanallah alhamdulillah allahu akbar you have some free time make dhikr you're angry make dhikr Sit, sitting down and driving your car and you have nothing to do this make some dhikr right it is light on the tongue but it's heavy on the scales of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Number two, exhorting mujahada in following the commands of Allah, struggling, striving always to follow the commands of Allah. This helps us to control our emotions, our desires, this willpower that we have, that we need to control our anger when it, and our desires come from personal development and training. So if you know you're not performing your five daily salah, let us start there. If you know you're drinking alcohol, then stop. Maybe not every week, maybe not every month. Start reducing it with a struggle to stop eventually. Because none of us can just flip a switch and stop doing something immediately. We are human beings. Hence the term mujahada. It's a constant struggle. Abstaining from sinful activities that make our heart filthy and weak, which in turn brings negligence into our heart. And this is something especially for our young people. Our young people in this, our teenagers especially, and adolescents, our emotions are all over the place. Due to the hormonal imbalances and development of the human being, we get angry very quickly. But you get angry very quickly, annoyed very quickly. Similarly, your, your desires are very high at that age. This is, a this is a reminder for you and even for the elders. 
This is a time that as much as the distractions and the temptations are there, we must control ourselves. This is the mujahada. This is the struggle, reminding myself that I am accountable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because, my dear brothers and sisters, as we indulge in these sins, the moment that you indulge in a sin, you become negligent to the command of Allah at that moment. Right? And if you commit to continue committing that sin on a regular basis, then becoming negligent to Allah becomes a normal thing for you to do. And as such, even committing bigger sins will become a normal thing for you. It's a chain reaction. So as such, we have to control that. We're going to commit sin, but we need to turn back to Allah. As the Prophet wasallam said, that whoever commits a sin and he follows it up with a good deed, it will wipe it out. So we commit a sin, turn back to Allah in repentance, do something good. So we bring ourselves back. We keep ourselves in control. Number four, constantly reminding ourselves that Allah is watching us. And this is also will help as the previous point that I mentioned. Number five, regularly reciting the Quran. Every day, the life of the believer should consist of recitation of the Quran. Even five minutes, my dear brothers and sisters. Even five minutes. And I'm 100% sure each and every one of us can, five, can find five minutes every day to recite the Quran. But subhanAllah, most of us, we can't even find five minutes for a week. Maybe a whole year goes by and we don't even pick up the Quran and recite from it. But one of the ways of controlling the anger is reciting the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, Allah bi dhikrillahi tatuma'inna al By the dhikr of Allah, does the heart settle, does the heart find satisfaction and ease? Reciting Quran is the best form of the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remembering death and visiting the graveyard. Because we will be reminded of where we will end up, where we're going to be. And the final destination for each and every one of us in our transition to the Akhirah. Being reminded of that is a very powerful thing as a deterrent against committing more sins. Number seven, number seven sitting in good company and staying away from bad company. Very, very important. If you're in company of people who are prone to anger or acting upon it, you're going to become like that. But if you're in the company of good people, of people who show that example and share that example of control, then by, Allah, by the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will learn that control ourselves. Number eight, taking lessons, lessons from our shuyukh and our ulama and the experts in the field of tazkiyah, spiritual development, the spirituality. When we are faced with a problem and you can't find, figure it out on your own, that is why we have our ulama, we have our shuyukh, we have our learned people who would have studied this, who would have gone through this with their, sh- with their mashayikh themselves, who would understand the, 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 the intricacies of the development of the self. That is not expected for everyone to know. That is why we must seek it out. Go and seek that advice and learning from our scholars. Remember, when you take advices, be careful where you take it from. Because if you're seeking advice that's concerning our deen, then who are the people who are the successors of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? The teachers, the people with knowledge. So let us go back to them. Before I close my khutbah, I would just like to relate a beautiful story about a, a very pious servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the past that he had a slave girl that was one day bringing water for him and as she was bringing this water for him her hand slipped and the container with the water fell and broke and it injured him so right away he became very angry now this slave girl she looked upon his face and she recited she started reciting a verse from the Quran she said, the meaning of this, those who swallow their anger. So this great, this pious man, he turned to her and said, I have swallowed my anger. So she continued, and forgive people. She's reminding him from the verse of Quran. So he said to her, I have forgiven you. Right? So right away, she saw in him a strict adherence to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine this. Imagine that someone under your control hurt you, especially the way how these kinds of relationships would have probably unfolded. Anger would have filled with him, filled him. But as soon as he hear, and those who swallow their anger, and those who uh, forgive people, right? And she saw him acted on it. She continued the ayat, Wallahu yuhibbul muhsineen, 
and Allah loves those who do good. So what he did? He said, I granted you your freedom. I grant you your freedom. Just from a single ayat. And then this is a lesson for us. The reality that people get angry, everyone gets angry. And comes back to the point, the main point of this khutbah. That anger is a strength that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with. However, as with anything, anything good, if we do not keep it in control, it could lead us into that which is evil and that which is bad. And this is the meaning of the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. La tawdab. Do not become angry, meaning do not transgress the limits of anger. Remember, my dear brothers and sisters, when you're angry, recite for recite a'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim for verily anger is from shaitan if you're standing sit down if you're sitting down lie down take you know lie down because anger the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he uh, he associated with fire when you look at a fire how is fire moving it's jumping up trying to raise up all the time isn't that so rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said if any one of you become angry while he's standing then you just sit if his anger goes away then that is good otherwise he should lie down Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also inform us to make wudu when we when we're angry. Go and make wudu. What cools down a fire? Water. So therefore we're angry, go and make wudu. Remember Allah at that moment. Drink some water. Move away from the thing that is making you angry, the person that's making you angry. In anger, do not discuss anything with anybody. Neither with your spouse, your child, nobody. In anger, do not have that discussion. Because in anger we can involve in things like backbiting, slandering, insult when we're involved in discussion. And lastly, remember Allah has created you. We are all servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Each one of us, and even though we know why Allah created us, we're supposed to be obedient to Him, He's still merciful upon us, even though we consistently sin and disobey Him. So therefore, remember that that person that makes you angry, remember they are human beings too. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just as He has mercy upon you, show mercy upon them. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He said what? He said that man la yarham la yarham. Whomsoever doesn't show mercy will not be shown mercy to Allah by Allah uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let us show mercy. Let us control our anger, my dear brothers and sisters. Let us seek the ways to control our anger. Well, hopefully we can all be in a state of we can all achieve the state of the nafs, the nafsul mutma'inna. I mean, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah al-Kareem, wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in, wa man ihtada bi ihsan ila yawm al-deen, amma ba'd, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad, kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim, innaka hamidun majeed, Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad, kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim, innaka hamidun majeed, اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم أعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم أعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك آمين اللهم اجعلنا من الصابرين ومن الذاكرين ومن الشاكرين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من عذاب القبر ومن عذاب الجهنم ومن فتنة المحيا ومماتى ومن شر فتنة المسيح الدجال اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من الكبر وكفر وفقر والرياء برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم عز الإسلام المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم انصر الإسلام المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم احفظ وانصر إخواننا في سوريا وفي عراق وفي أفغانستان وفي فلسطين وفي الصين وفي بورما وفي كل مكان آمين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين عباد الله إن الله يأمركم بالعدل والإحسان وإتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكر الله يذكركم واستعين يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى أكبر وأقيم الصلاة إن صلاة كانت على المؤمنين كتاب موقوتا